Water is a scarce resource in the planet and should be protected at all costs in light of climate change, which is real and here with us. When they want to drought, there is no water. When it rains, there are floods. Most hit by the effects of climate change are arid and semi-arid lands in Kenya, where a large population of women and children struggle to fetch clean water. People used to travel from here, they used to go to Sagante, Shallowways, to look for water and they come back in the evening. Because and when we lack water, we just return home empty-handed. But there is hope. Now there is water that we are using here. I have a community project. They used to travel, for example, seven kilometers. We reduced the distance from seven kilometers to uh, 700 meters. There's a big change since the kiosk was set up here. Water Sector Trust Fund is turning out to be the new hope in these dry times. Water Sector Trust Fund act as a basket fund for mobilizing resources and providing financial assistance towards capital investment costs of providing water services and sanitation. Through EU Supporting Horn of Africa Resilience Program, commonly referred to as EU Share Program, projects geared towards addressing water crisis in arid and semi-arid lands have been set up. What we're trying to do with the EU support more broadly is to build up resilience in Kenya so that the national systems can prepare and respond better to incidents of drought. Of course, one of the major issues when you think about drought in Kenya is access to water. Um, what we were trying to do through the Danida share support to the Water Sector Trust Fund was to ensure greater access to water for poor rural communities in Kenya. We will take care of uh, the EU support for the water sector uh, at the same time as we handle our own uh, assistance. So, so in reality it, it's more or less uh, one program but with funding coming both from uh, the European Union and from, from Denmark. Marsabit, christened the cradle of mankind and tucked away in the northern part of the country, is the largest county in the country. Marsabit has some of the most contradicting weather patterns owing to the presence of Mount Marsabit that gives it an illusion of highland weather despite being in the arid and semi-arid region. Water scarcity is a major issue in Marsabit County. Mark you, there are no permanent rivers here. Underground water, water pans, springs and rain harvesting are some of the ways used to alleviate the perennial water shortage problem in this area. This is Kubikalo Water and Sanitation Project located about 20 kilometers from Marsabit town. The project was funded by EU Share through Danish International Development Agency, abbreviated as Danida. It serves over 5,000 people directly and over 10,000 people residing in Marsabit town. The total project cost was close to 10 million Kenya shillings and the project took 10 months to implement between 2015 and 2016. This borehole is serving both uh, this community and also serving the urban population at the headquarters. And the urban population rely on the water boosters so who are commercial on commercial basis, who come and draw uh, fresh water here, and then they sell water to the urban population. It has uh, both dimens uh, two dimensions. Uh, it, is, it helps people to get water uh, by buying the, the water from the owners of the water boosters. It also creates employment for the owners of the, and those who are employment for the uh, people who have ventured into that uh, business. Uh, it also helps in terms of uh, building industry, construction industry. I nasedi asana. Sasa si imaji. Tango imaji na toka sindiosi si na bata yumbusi. Alikuwa yumbusi akuna na fast. This water point has really changed my livelihood. My livestock has even expanded gradually. Sisi na bata imaji. Sindio oipo liko apa na ingine pande. Water 
mufuko si ndio nabata watoto The locals have benefited immensely from Kubi Kalo water project. Meet Dida Guyo, a mother of five. She is elated by the reduced distance of fetching water and she shares her experience. I'm now able to attend to other chores because the water point is nearer as opposed to the long distances we used to travel before. The availability of water at Kubikalo has brought in fresh ideas and hope. The community has now diversified and vented into crop farming through overhead irrigation. We did a cost-benefit analysis to come up with which crops will yield high profit. So we just came up with that combination of tomato, uh, onions, kales, the spinach, and watermelon, knowing that the market is readily, readily available. This will help me produce food for my family and also sell to get money for my youth. This water point at Kubikalo has led to increased settlements in the area and also a primary school with a population of about 160 pupils who heavily depend on the borehole for their needs. We have two 10 liter tanks, uh, 10,000 liter tanks. So actually, when we get when they fill for us one time, then during the beginning of the term, it takes us almost one and a half month. So when actually we run out of it, then we inform the chairman. And the water we use not only use for cooking, but also sometimes for cleaning our classes. The community operate and manage the water project on their own under a committee they elect and entrust to run the project. We charge with the capacity of the water boozer. There is a water boozer of 4,000. The capacity with the water boozer of 3,000. It depends with the capacity, then 1,500. Normally with 7,000 and above, to charge 3,500, 4,000. Then 7,000 below, to charge 2,000 up to 1,500. This project, gets an approximately an income or a revenue earned a month as, as much as 300,000 shillings. When they, ex, they remove the expenditure, the expenditure is around 160. They have a profit of 150 plus every month. So when the, they have a breakdown on the generators, they buy them, they, they, they are on. When they, okay, like fueling it, like paying the people, the operators that take care of the, of the project, and the watchman and all that, they, they do it on, them, on their own. They don't uh, get any support from any, any other person. If I was to add the 11th commandment to the 10th commandment, is that water is not free. So if Kenyans, we are not paying for water, then we will be relying on our national coffers, especially treasury, and the well wishers civil society to be funding the same project over and over and again. So I with the pressure that we have from all the devolved functions in this country. Somehow, treasury is the cow that we milk, all of us. We don't expect, uh, you know, how we are over milking treasury, that there will be money from the taxpayers that will be taking care of those infrastructure. So we need to come up with, with, with a mechanism on how we should be managing and maintaining our infrastructure once we put them in place. In the neighboring Isiolo County, we have Ngalabilabia Water and Sanitation Project. The 200 meters borehole is high yielding with a capacity of 18 cubic meters per hour. And of interest is it uses green energy, commonly known as solar energy, that is abundant in the area. We have the solar panels, which are 32 in number, and each panel has uh, 200 watts. So in total, we have 6,000. 400 watts or 6.4 kilowatts. So that solar energy is converted into electrical energy and we have a submersible pump which is which is a pumping water up to the water kiosk. This is a project my office implemented and we were here to follow it up so that the benefit of the intended benefit is achieved. After even handing over to the community 
we are doing several visits to this place to see for ourselves whether the way we have left this place is still that condition, is still serving the community as intended. And fortunately enough, that is going on well. Since we left this place, there are no issues, no breakdown as so far. There is no leakages along the pipelines. And I think the community are actually the people who are even safeguarding this place. They are giving the security to the solars which we have here, and even all the infrastructures which is here is in a safe hand of the community. The Ngalabilabia community are purely pastoralists, and so the project could not have come at a better time. The project has reduced the many hours used before to travel long distances in search of water. Now that the water point is nearer, I work much better. At times I'd make charcoal or go to look after the livestock, and when I come back, there is no water. But now I work well because I don't have to travel for long distances in search of water. Even if I came home late, I don't have to worry because the water point is nearer. This water project is not ours alone. Other communities are also benefiting thanks to the project. I come here after three days and it takes me four hours to reach here. We have a lot of challenges with water for both the animals and for us as well. Our livestock would get water from the park, but at the park, there are rangers who would catch the animals and ask for money. So it was a big challenge. In Garissa County, the Shimbri Water and Sanitation Project has come in handy, eliminating water tracking that has characterized the region for the last two decades, easing the lives of the community members. The project was funded by the EU share through the NIDA and serves around 3,000 people. The project entails pumping of water from a borehole to a plastic tank elevated on a concrete tower situated at the borehole compound together with the generator house. The water then flows by gravity into two water kiosks in Shimbri Shopping Center. As we speak, we have no shortage of water in Shimbri. So this particular project will go a long way in supporting the population living not only in Shimbri, but also people living around Shimbri location. The livestock can take, even if it's fit for human consumption, we have taken this water to the laboratory in Warma, and the qualities have been approved. The Shimbri's water project impact is already being felt. This water point has really changed my livelihood. My livestock has even expanded gradually. We used to travel close to five kilometers. But the distance has been reduced and I'm so grateful. The total project cost about 9 million Kenya shillings and the project took 13 months to implement. After project implementation, such projects are handed over to the community to manage and run them on a day-to-day -day basis, hence the need to empower the beneficiaries through training. <laughs> achieved through ongoing collaboration between the Water Sector Trust Fund and the Kenya Water Institute. It is uh, quite interesting because uh, we are getting very good feedback. People now understand why they have to bear the responsibility of taking over their own projects. This, that's the assumption that once a project kicks off, we need somebody else from outside to do it. But actually the communities themselves who should own these projects. The challenges of the 21st century require new thinking. And one of it I can tell you uh, is as Kenyans, we need to see how we can resolve. We cannot be implementing projects the way we, were, we used to, we were doing since independence. 
Like, I'll give you a very good example. Boreholes were there since we were born. Any infrastructure that exists, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, how come things are not working? How come a borehole that you did six months ago or a year ago is not working all of a sudden? We realize that the issue and our answer and the solution to our problem is governance. Governance meaning who is going to take care of this borehole? Let us ask ourselves, before even we rush to constructing the borehole, can we sit down with the community and ask ourselves, who is actually going to be taking care of this borehole? Then, once we agree and we say it's, it's community X, if it's community X, it's from there, then we can say, we can build the capacity, bring them on board, share with them all the issues about the borehole and what it will entail, including paying for water. From Garissa, we head to Wajir County. This is Griff to Water and Sanitation Project in Wajir West Sub-County. The project is under Wajir Water and Sewerage Company, the body mandated to provide water services to the people of Wajir. In 2015, the project received a grant from Water Sector Trust Fund through the EU Share Program to equip the borehole with solar pumps and accessories. A total of 4.9 million shillings was then pumped into the project, which saw the installation of 52 solar panels, renovation of the pump house, repair of the fence, and a two-door sanitation block. Solar panels or solar power it supports. When you put off the generator, uh, generator from 9, then you start running solar from 9 to 5 p.m. In that period, we may use a lot of fuel to fuel the generator. Then that, when we, between that period for using this one, it can be less for us. The project is now reaching a population of about 10,000 people and feeding about 2,000 livestock, and the cost of running it has reduced drastically. The establishment of water kiosks and yard taps in the area has also reduced the time spent by locals who used to travel far distances to look for water. And it is a source of revenue for operators and Wajir Water and Sanitation Company. I have benefited from this project a lot. I use it at my home and I am also a water vendor. Time now to take stock of the EU share projects in the northern coast of Kenya. Lamu County is one of the semi-arid regions in Kenya, categorized under the arid and semi-arid lands. Lamu County is a water stress county with uh, around 90% of the population depending on underground water. They, they don't have uh, surface water, there is no river or lake which they can be able to rely on. And with the growing population, the demand for water across the two sub-counties is also on a constant rise. Uh, so the population is about 130, 130,000. And the uh, so water demand in the Huru County is about 20,000 cubic meters. But the so water facilities that have been established, they only uh, produce half of the water demand, about 10,000 cubic meters. With the water demand across the two sub-counties higher than the supply, projects set up in 2015 by the Water Sector Trust Fund through the EU Share Program have come in handy to bridge the gap. The water services project such as this in Witu Division serves about 4,000 people in four villages. Through time, the population, the water demand was increasing daily until our tank, which was, which, which was a 100 meter cubic, was not enough to serve the population, meaning that uh, we wrote proposals, we approached the WSTF, they gave us funding. Thus, Water Sector Trust Fund, under their objective to contribute to reduced poverty, came in. The Witu Water Project has expanded at a cost of about 5 million Kenya shillings and that meant more output and greater impact. 
the Water Sector Trust Fund financed the storage tank, that is 15 meter tower uh, water tank, and uh, the capacity of the tank is 126 cubic meters. The entire community now can get water services enough quantity, timely, we are always on. There's no time, our, our taps are dry. I have seen great changes compared to how things were before and after we put up this kiosk here. At first, before the project was established, people are walking around as far as six kilometers to get water. And the, the time consumed to get water is around four to six hours. So that is, let's say, from morning 7, 7 a.m. up to 11 or 12 p.m. So really the project has reduced the time looking for water and also it has reduced the distances of getting to water points. Apart from the water services provision in Witu Ward, the Water Sector Trust Fund through the EU Share Programme also funded construction of sanitation blocks in three schools in the area to improve their sanitation. The sanitation blocks serve about 1,000 pupils in all three schools and have improved sanitation and increased pupil enrollment and attendance. From the enrollment, which was very large for us, it was so good because the enrollment was 303. We have 173 boys and 130 girls. So at least we saw that it is a, a bit relief for us. Another county that has benefited from EU share program is Tana River County. Residents, especially from Katsangani Ward, Kurua sublocation, have everything to smile about. The situation before the project was pathetic. Women were traveling the whole day to cover between 15 and 25 kilometers to search for water. And uh, when they managed to get the water, remember it's only one to be honest, this project has helped us because before we didn't have a project like this. But now, even though the water is still not enough, a resident cannot fail to get at least two or three jerry cans a day that will help them. There is no water in several places, so most of them come for water here or down there. I'm very happy because I live here at Vibao Vivili and since this project began, there has been water. This is all thanks to the Katsangani Hurara Water Projects established in 2015 and have since transformed the lives of over 2,300 households, translating to about 14,000 people. The Katsangani Hurara Project was originally created in the year 2000 when people began to settle here. Then came Mapato Water Users Association six years later, established from Mapato Youth Group to spearhead the provision of water services to residents of this area. We were funded because in 2015 there was community clash due to water scarcity. Our office was based at Tarasa Trading Center, but due to the clashes we were to come to so as to mitigate and help in, in community conflicts, we submitted our proposal to WSTF, which they agreed to fund. I think water as a resource is a major source of conflict between farmers and pastoralists and even communities living in Kurawa. For a long time, the groundwater itself, we had experienced conflict, but uh, we have put structures in place. The area was prone to intercommunity clashes due to water scarcity, and in 2015, Water Sector Trust Fund, in partnership with the European Union, funded projects that would later be a source of life and peace.
Hurara Katsangani Water and Sanitation Projects were funded in two phases, with Phase 1 fund being 9 million Kenya shillings, while Phase 2 funding was about 8.5 million shillings. At this point, we can say that we are being helped by the Water Sector Trust Fund, especially through the money we received through Mopato Water Users Association. It is also estimated that over 5,000 livestock have benefited from the project. Muhammad Bishar is a livestock keeper. This water point has really changed my livelihood. My livestock has even expanded gradually. The water sector trust fund projects in this area have no doubt had a positive impact on the lives of residents here. Increased water supply and reduced waterborne diseases, hence their thirst is quenched and sanitation is on the verge of getting better. I'm very happy and uh, I think I have fulfilled my dream and be part of the humankind who at least try to help to change lives, people's lives for the underprivileged. We are right away using a two-inch pump. It is my vision and hope that in the near future the project grows to at least six-inch pipe so that we can have enough water. Sustainable development goal number six calls for clean water and sanitation for all people. And that is why Water Sector Trust Fund is keen to provide conditional and unconditional grants to the counties and assist in financing the development and management of water services in marginalized and underserved areas. We are funded by several donors. Uh, that is uh, uh, the Royal Danish Embassy is one of them. Uh, we are funded by EU. We have this system that we are working with the counties where also we are asking the counties to provide a counterpart. So if I am giving a county money, for example, I will say, can you contribute 10%? And most of the counties were able to do that. And that is the kind of relationship that we have with the, the Council of Governors. Danida has been investing in water sector since 2005. And in 2005, uh, we were supporting the water sector to do uh, reforms, the water sector reforms, under the Water Act 2002. In 2005, that is the period under which the reforms were being operationalized. And so Danida, together with uh, Sweden were, and other partners, participated in the operationalization of the water sector reforms during that time. That program ran up to 2009. Uh, after which then uh, the institutions established under the Water Act 2002 became operational. And so Danida now again from 2009 entered into another uh, agreement with the Kenyan government to support now the water sector institution uh, capacity building together with the investments in the, in, the, in the field. And during this time, Danida focused more in the ASAL areas, that is the northern Kenya, northern eastern and the part of coastal Kenya to enhance access uh, to water and sanitation services to the marginalized communities uh, living in those areas. I think we can congratulate the Water Sector Trust Fund on the good work done so far. Um, we think that the model is working really well that it's a, it's a government agency but it works very well with the communities and the private sector water providers as well and really tries to make the whole sector work better to provide water better to the poorest rural, rural and urban communities.